Hello, uh, so this is my first ever YouTube video ever, uh, except for ones that I filmed myself, but I've never filmed myself, as in my face. So, uh, first and foremost, this video is going to be about uh, retro games, which are a passion of mine, uh, something that I've always enjoyed since I was uh, a wee nipper. A little kid so basically uh, I moved to Japan so this is a retro rundown of the kind of like I've only just moved recently so it's just a case of uh, I, I've always bought retro games uh, in the UK uh, when I lived there I moved over here and I had to indulge in my passion again of course uh, you do notice the games are considerably if you if you know anything if you're familiar with uh, eBay and any other auction website you would be obviously uh, aware that Japanese games are considerably cheaper uh, than the POW or NTSC American counterparts uh, so basically uh, it's a Game hunting, if you like, that's what you call it. It's uh, fun, it's great, you know, you go out and you find games, especially over here, you can go out with m minimal amount of money and uh, buy yourself some cracking games. O obviously, uh, there's the language barrier to consider. Uh, I, I can't read hardly anything, so it's going to be a, a learning curve for me to, to be able to play the games and understand them, especially as... Uh, the most sold games uh, in Japan are RPGs, uh, which are text heavy, and uh, they're the most prevalent as well. Uh, that are in the shops, you know. So it's uh, it's okay, you know. Uh, I mean, if you like RPGs, you can just go into a shop, and they're just everywhere, and they're very reasonable. And you know, YouTube is full of people showing their uh, NTSC uh, American collections or uh, their POW collections, their European POW collections, which are great, obviously, amazing. Uh, and I, I, I also had that, but I actually sold most of my, or all of my collection uh, before I came to Japan. It kind of bankrolled my uh, trip over here, so it's kind of uh, funny and tragic at the same time. So uh, let's let's get a start then, I suppose. Uh, I I picked up a few games. This, this is over a, a matter of a couple of weeks, basically. But there's a number of shops over here. Uh, I, I know people might be aware of a shop called Super Potato. Super Potato, maybe. Someone could perhaps correct me. And also Mandarake. Uh, Mandarake is a shop, because I, I live in Fukuoka, uh, which is in Kyushu, which is the southernmost island if you yeah it's the southernmost island uh so yeah i i, I bought these games one from mandarake which was the super famicom game which you're about to see and i bought the rest from a discount dvd slash game slash bookstore uh which basically uh, sells discounted games. Uh, one one that I went to only had PS2 games, which I love. Anyway, I love, I like, I like a lot. Mm, okay, I prefer PS1 games. Uh, I love PS1 games, and I, I love Super Famicom or Super Nintendo games. Uh, I love, love, love those games. Uh, whereas PS2, yeah, I do like the games. I'm starting to veer more towards the PS2 now. It feels more nostalgic, but uh, I definitely my my true passion was the PS1 and going back to the Super Nintendo yeah I love the Super Nintendo it's probably my uh, I love it the console I love the most I think uh, is the Super Nintendo but the the games I love the most are the PS1 I don't know if that makes any sense but it's just Super Nintendo was just so cool like the cartridges used to load up almost instantaneously and uh, the colours were cool. The sound was cool. That you know, the 16-bit uh, music was just you know out there, funky sort of Japanese music. It's always always good uh, to keep you entertained. But uh, yeah, these get 
one of the shops only sold PS2, and the other one sold PS1 games, and I was, I was quite surprised that was the one I went to today, which kind of sort of inspired me to, to make this this first video, uh, because basically I, I know that I'm starting out on a, some form of collection journey, if you like, so it's uh, it's a start anyway, but it just you, you will be uh, kind of interested and maybe amazed but I mean the, the prices are slightly cheaper than eBay prices if you're talking about trying to make money uh, they'd probably be quite insignificant quantities of cash so it probably wouldn't be worth your time to, to buy Japanese video games and sell them it's kind of like selling ice to Eskimos because of the language barrier uh, Japanese games aren't in huge demand especially RPGs which are dirt 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 cheap here which you're about to find out uh, so, anyway, I've been talking for a long time, but that was just an introduction. Uh, so, anyway, I'm 31 years old, and I've been playing games from the age of, uh, God knows, 11, maybe. So, very, very young, uh, and I've got a Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES, and with Turtles, which was that game that nobody could actually complete. Uh, without an action replay, uh, I'm sure people have, but they've probably never seen daylight for the past 18 years. Uh, so, introduction over, let's move swiftly on. So I'll start first of all with probably mm, what was it? the least interesting of the lots that I have. So, let's go with this first. So, I went into shop called Book Off and it sells uh, PS2 games. This is the PS2 games. So this one is Wild Arms, the fifth vanguard. And let's look at the back. And basically it's just a Wild Arms game. Uh, I played the original for the Super Nintendo for the PS1 and it was it was a good game. I never never played much of it but I could tell that it was like uh, a, a slick enough RPG it wasn't a total waste of space like Lord of the Rings for the SNES for example where you literally don't know your ass from your elbow and you wander around in circles and then ultimately commit Harry Curry. Uh so the second one is uh, Final Fantasy X2 uh, which is the international uh, plus last mission this doesn't have a manual uh, so let me go back to Wild Arms first. Let me tell you how much I paid for this. Uh, where's my... I, don't, I don't have the receipt. I think it was 250 yen. I believe it was 250 yen, which is about $2.50 or £1.50, I imagine, if you're British. Uh, and probably maybe €1.75. Euro 75 cents if, uh, this, these are just approximations. I, I have no clue of the current exchange rate, so don't quote me on that. Uh, Okay, so those two are done. I paid 500 for Final Fantasy X-2. Uh, and Grandia Extreme, I paid 250 yen for this. Which, again, is about $2.50. Uh, and it looks great. I mean, uh, obviously, I don't understand a single word. Well, some of it. But very few. Very little. Uh, so it looks cool. You know, Grandia Extreme didn't come out in Europe. only came out in America. And uh, of Japan, it seems. Uh, Magna Carta, which is quite a, a rare game uh, in the PAL region, I know for a fact. It, it, it commands a reasonable price uh, for for the European version, but this was uh, one one hundred yen, so one dollar, uh, fifty p, sixty p, which is just extraordinary. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that. And uh, let's get to Dark Cloud. Dark Cloud is. Uh, Obviously a great game, sort of Zelda-esque uh, for the PS2. I never really got into it. I played it, I've, like I've played most of the games uh, that ever came out. <laughs> but yeah, I've played it. It's, it's, it's slick. I mean, people love it uh, and it's got a good reputation. And the Dark Chronicle, obviously, which was the sequel, has an even better uh, reputation. So here you go. Here's a game I bought today, which is Xenosaga, which is... I've played Xeno Gears. I've never actually played Xenosaga 1, 2, or 3. Uh, I had, I've had them before, the English versions. Uh, it wasn't released in Europe, at least I don't believe it was. 
I you have to make sure on that. Uh, I don't believe it was released in Europe. Maybe one was, but two and three won't. Uh, I have to double check. But yeah, that was 105 yen, as you can see, which is, a, a, again, a dollar and uh, 70p, 60p, 50p. Christ knows, but cheap as chips anyway. It's a rat Bobby Dazzler. Okay, so... Uh, basically, after that, I went to a, another shop today which is where I found uh, a number of games uh, PS1 games so let's let's move on to the PS1 games I'm just going to grab them I've hit the 10 minute 37 second mark so I'm not sure if I'm going to go over so uh, where's my oh, where's the bloody rest of these I bought more than that I can only see four games guess it was just four games so let's go through these swiftly I think this is a 15 minute limit I hope it is anyway uh, let's go through these swiftly so uh, Crash Bandicoot 2 for the PS1 which was uh, 100 yen as well one dollar a Crash Bandicoot 2 which you don't necessarily I don't think the story lives up to much and it's just definitely a platform so one dollar to play Crash Bandicoot 2, cool, great deal, happy with that. Uh, IQ, uh, this looked kind of funky. Again, you can see 105 yen, about a dollar. It looked like a, a you know, isometric sort of puzzle game. Uh, looks kind of fun, 3D. Uh, I don't know, looks okay to me. A uh, dollar. Uh, and Parasite Eve, uh, obviously, uh, Squaresoft game before they. Uh, Butchered their reputation, uh, joining up with Enix. These were the sort of like defining games of the PS1 era. Uh, so this was a good game by all accounts. And again, that was a dollar. Uh, so it's just like unbelievably, unbelievably reasonable. So that was uh, yeah a dollar. And then uh, this was what I saw, which is uh, great. I mean, uh, I've played the NTSC version. I've had the 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 black label uh, brand new for the PS1 before I owned it uh, once I sold it to a Russian guy uh, long story uh, so yeah that's that Final Fantasy Tactics uh, let's look at the back the game art uh, looks pretty cool uh, I don't know if it's the same I can't remember it's, no it's not the same it's not exactly the same as the uh, NTSC version you uh, USA version. I'm sure it's similar, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, and last but not least, this is what I bought from Mandarake. Now, obviously, Chrono Trigger, great game. Uh, 150 pounds in the UK and 100 and 200 dollars for a mint condition one. And this is this is pretty. This is pretty mint, you know. Uh, the corners are sharp. You know, it's not squashed at all. Japanese people tend to keep stuff in pretty good nick. Uh, a lot of the gamers are adults usually, uh, and people would have bought these, uh, especially RPG players, because the stories are, are quite uh, can have adult themes, so uh, they have quite appeals to an adult market really. So they do tend to look after them. So yeah, the, the instructions are, are crisp as well, and that was 500 yen. So I mean, it's just ridiculous, really. I mean. Not much more on eBay, you know. You might get ten dollars for it, fifteen hundred yen, fifteen dollars if you sold it separately and waited. But it's kind of pointless, really. All the work and waiting and then relisting and stuff. So it's kind of cool just to just to be able to own this game. I mean, I've had the had the USA version about three or four different times over the years. Uh, bought it and sold it on and stuff. Uh, but yeah five dollars for this so basically all these games that you can see here uh, came to about uh three thousand yen three thousand yen thirty dollars uh which obviously is uh a piss in the ocean compared to what you'd have to pay anyway 
that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, maybe next video soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.